Men, thank you, team. Oh, church, it is good to worship together. Amen. It is good. Welcome back. Thank you. It is good to be back. For those of you who are not aware, I've been away for about uh, two weeks, about a quarter of the way around the world, and, uh, and I come proclaiming good news that God is at work in this world, church. Amen? As we went out... Um, Pablo first, and then had me join in prayer, and, and the one thing we really heard from the Lord is that this is strategic, and it was. It is important, uh, and we'll, we'll share more about it this morning, but I would like to invite our children to head downstairs. Let's pray over our children and over the time in the Word as well upstairs. Lord, thank you. Thank you for this time to gather as your people to learn about you, to set this time apart, Lord, and receive your word for us today. Prepare our hearts and our minds, Lord. Bless the teachers downstairs, Lord. Lord, will you guard my lips that they be your words today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. There is a lot to share, so I'm going to Give it out in little doses and just a few stories this morning as well. But we are uncovering the carpet. Do you remember that? We're looking at the hardwood floors of our faith as a sermon series, remembering what we believe. And the topic today is God's governance. And I I prepared before the trip, there's lots of things that I would love to talk about, and they mostly have to do with how. But as I was away... God really arrested me to bring a word that I brought there as well, uh, a similar, uh, the same passage about the why. Why? We still believe in God's design. Why do we do things the way we do things? Where do we look? What are we trying to imitate? What are we trying to demonstrate? And so with that, I want to share heart with you this morning, amen? I want to share heart with you. Now, my heart has been captured, (laughs) so it's not even necessarily my heart that I want to share with you, it's Jesus' heart. How do you know someone's heart? You listen to their prayer. What has captured their heart will be the focus of their prayer. If we believe in God's governance, then we want to be hearing from God. He has not changed. His heart has not changed. He is not doing things in a different way. We want to know God's design. He is the same all over the world. His good news is the same all over the world. The Holy Spirit is moving in power all over the world. Now, some things are different from culture to culture and place to place. For example, can you go to the next one? What is the definition of cold? What is your definition of cold? While I was away, this was the coldest night that I was there. So you see the little snapshot of my phone saying 79 degrees, all right? Now look at the brother and what he's wearing. Full-on winter coat with a fur hood at 79 degrees, all right? So culture is different. I am still, my fingertips are cold. I'm not kidding you. I'm still adjusting. Now, this day, I believe you were shoveling snow while I was having this 80-degree day. So things are different around the world, but God's truth remains. God's heart remains. Amen? So if we want to know God's timeless heart, we want to hear His prayer. And we have a large prayer from Jesus in John 17. Let's try to understand what the Holy Spirit is revealing in the Gospel of John. And I think what you'll find is our mission has more to do with unity than you might think. Now, 
This is from the Gospel of John, where we're going to be landing in, in John 17. But in John 1, 1, how he starts, he says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. The Word was with God. Now, the word that John is talking about, he goes on to say, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. The word he is talking about is Jesus the Christ, the light of the world. The word is Jesus, and he was with God. Not only does Scripture proclaim that Jesus was God, it proclaims he was with God. Often we focus this just to say that Jesus was God, but he was with God, which points us all the way back to the very beginning, to Genesis 1-1, where it says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So how long into Scripture does it take for Jesus to arrive? What's the first appearance of Jesus in the Scriptures? It's four words in. In the beginning, God. Amen? In the beginning, God. God existed before everything else was made, was created. This is his pattern. This is who he is. The Holy Spirit is pointing us to an eternal truth. Not only is Jesus God, God in his wholeness is three persons. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. His wholeness is is unity and diversity in one. It's a oneness together. Now, the pinnacle of creation then goes on to say it. So out of his wholeness, God created. And the pinnacle of his creation is humankind. Genesis 1, 26 and 27. Then God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our Likeness. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. This incredible diversity right away in creation. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit existing together in perfect harmony. Not only one, but in oneness with one another. And this is love. This is love. Not only to be loving but to exist as a community full of freedom and purpose in relationship. And humankind is made in his likeness. Do you see this? We can't go too far. Humankind is made in his likeness. In fact, the one part of creation where he says it's not good is he says it's not good for man to be alone. Male, female, God. The pattern of the heavens on earth. Not about delegation, but partnership. Immediately, God empowers them with stewardship to care for his creation. See, delegation is responsibility without authority. But that's not the pattern of God. He gives them authority, stewardship of the earth. This is the pattern of God's governance reflected on earth earth in this beautiful design, male, female, and God. This is how we receive the definition of marriage. The design of marriage is meant to reflect God on earth. Now, I have a wonderful little illustration of that today. Heather and Danny, will you stand up? These two were just engaged to be married. Amen? Can we recognize them? <laughs> he did a cheer. Now, Danny returns to Japan soon, right? So, Lord, Holy Church, can we just extend our hands? Lord, protect them. Protect this commitment. Let their love grow stronger in the time leading up to their covenant with one another. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. However, there was this beautiful design and then entered a problem. 
a problem entered into creation. Humankind twisted this possibility when they decided they should define good and evil for themselves. Now, them? Was it only Adam and Eve? No, history is full of humanity redefining good and evil apart from God. Now, is this just the past? Turn on the news. Open up YouTube. Read the paper, which I still do, just so you know. <laughs> but you can see it today, amen? Humankind def- redefining good and evil apart from God. Now, you don't need the news, do you? Do you know people around you who are self-centered, who choose to live in offense instead of forgiveness, who practice immorality and believe they know what's right more than God does? Not only apart from God, but they know better. Let's get real. Have you ever had the thought, God, how could you allow this to happen? Or, how could that be wrong, God? It's not hurting anybody. Now, having questions is okay, even encouraged, but judging God based on our feelings is once again defining good and evil apart from God. That's why Scripture says all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Humanity needed and needs a Savior. God knows in order to restore the unity he had in mind for his most prized creation, it could only be accomplished in one way. His son had to pay the consequence for our rebellion. And here's the good news, church. He did. The Son of God died to prove the love of God and create a way for us to live everlasting life in unity with God. And he did it once for all. Amen? Now, before he did, the very night Jesus was betrayed, He spent a long time in prayer. And this is the context for where we come to in John 17. And I want to tell you, church, coming from Liberia, the gospel has reached Liberia. And these people are committed to be disciples, to learn about the word of God, to learn and to spread the good news. The way my brother Silent had it, and I'll introduce the team to you for sure, but he said, Josh, these people are angry for the gospel. We use the word zealous sometimes too, but they are so committed to see the gospel spread. So much work has been done in Liberia with this capital city that's right on the ocean, Monrovia. But all of the inner workings, the rest of Liberia needs the gospel to spread to the rural areas, to these villages that are way out in the bush. And they are so gung-ho for it. It was exciting to see how passionate they are to spread the gospel. So here in John 17, Jesus is praying. Praying right before he was killed to suffer the consequence of our rebellion against God's governance. And the chapter starts with, Jesus looked up to heaven. Jesus' prayer in that oneness, in God's governance, Now, a moment, just a moment. What if this prayer had not been recorded? Wouldn't you wonder, what was Jesus praying all this time? What was on his heart right before he was taken away and killed? How did he summarize his ministry thus far before his father? What thoughts did he have to express Moments before he was taken away to accomplish the work of the cross. Take a moment and appreciate the work of the Holy Spirit in giving us and revealing us this because it was recorded. What was Jesus praying about? The strategic intention of God's heart. It is strategic. He starts by praying for himself to be strengthened for the task ahead in verse 5. Now, Father, glorify me in your presence with that glory I had with you before the world existed. 
This is why I took you to the very beginning. Here he is talking about before the world existed. This is God's original good design, and I still believe in it. Next, he turns his prayer to the disciples that they may hold fast to his teachings. In verse 11, he says, Holy Father, protect them by your name that you have given me. In 17, he says, sanctify them by the truth, for your word is truth. And lastly, in verse 20, he says, I pray for not only these, not only those disciples who have walked with him for three years, I pray for not only these, but also for those who believe in me through their word. Church, Jesus is praying for us. And what is Jesus' prayer? Verse 21. That all of them may be one, Father. Just as you are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. He is still praying for God's governance to be reflected on earth. The light of the king in the heart of his disciples draws us together as members of one family working together to restore the goodness of God on earth. And when this light radiates from a community in a community, it prompts a conviction from everyone who is trapped in darkness that Christianity is the only true way for the salvation of the world. We were meeting day in, day out, and when we went in, we came across a lot of spiritual warfare as a team. But God brought us together from different corners of the world. I was here from Minnesota. John was there from Chicago. Brother Hudson was there from Zambia. And Silent was there from Zimbabwe. An apostolic team that God designed to be in this nation. They knew the Bible. They knew the good news. And when they heard that we were bringing in a team, they asked us to do a workshop for 150 pastors. And do you know what they asked? Can you train us and teach us about life in the Spirit? See, we can very easily make the Holy Trinity Father, Son, and Holy Book. They were missing life. They were asking, can you teach us about the life in the Spirit? And for three days, we ministered in the Spirit. And it was so good, church. It was so good to have my eyes up. And all of us said this. To have our eyes up. We have so long been focused. Focused inwardly. Focused on what are the things going on in the church. What are the things going on that we have to fight. What are the things going on with this person saying this and this person saying this. What's going on there? What's going to lift our eyes up and to participate in what God is doing in this world was a joy for the four of us who haven't seen each other in years to be training alongside one another and one person would be going out and would be teaching something and then someone would say, are you going to talk about this? And they would be like, no, go. And then the other person would come up and minister completely differently. We had different gifts which is exactly what God's design says. When Jesus ascended, he sent the fivefold ministry to build up the church, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. And I'm here to tell you, he is still working in that way. All of those gifts are needed today to build up the church into the fullness of Christ. Is the church in the fullness of Christ? Is the church in the fullness of Christ? It's, is it operating perfectly in the fullness of Christ? Until it is, we need the fivefold ministry. This is God's design for us. The Holy Spirit moving in power. And they wanted us to have revivals at night. And let me tell you, revival does not look like what you might think it looks like. Because God does not move in the same way twice. Amen? It's not about white tents or whatever. For them, it was the simple ministry of the Spirit that brought people to faith in Christ. There's the team right there. We were ministering the first night, 
and they had hired in a DJ in a DJ booth. And as we were ministering, Silent was, was preaching. And he asked if anybody was convicted and wanted to give their lives to Christ. And probably two dozen people walked forward. But the one, uh, a- amen, amen, <laughs> please don't let me, amen, amen. But the one, the one that broke me to tears, can you go ahead, was the one that was sitting behind the DJ booth. (laughs) And he had been with us. And he slowly stood up. And he kind of shuffled sideways. And he looked up to Silent. And he looked back down. And he moved like, like someone was pulling him from the chest. And he came up and gave his life to Jesus. Because just being around the community that radiates light. He was convicted. He saw there was something different that he needed. His name is Travis. Pray for him. Now you may say, Josh, that's great. You you went out. What if we can't go anywhere? What if we can't cross the oceans? How do we get about and go about on this mission? Well, I've said a lot already about being together. But look in verse 22 here, starting in 22. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one. Now comes the traveling section. I and them and you and me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. See, we have a mission. We have a journey to go on together. To be brought into complete unity. It will take leaving your comfort zone. And I'm not talking about getting on an airplane for 14 hours. I'm talking about not only loving those who agree with us. Not only loving loving those who do, do church the same way we do. We need to get out of the comfort zone so that we all may be brought to complete unity. God will draw you out if you are willing. And it's good company. Peter could have stayed in that boat. He knew boats really well. But Jesus said, come. Step out. Because every single church is one part of a larger work. When we came as a group, this is Hudson teaching and training And you notice he's turned facing the camera where I'm sitting. They had the leaders all sit on the side and kind of flow up to the stage. So Hudson, there was a lot to talk about and a lot to train. And he would talk to the group, and then he would turn, and he would talk right to the leadership. We each have a part to play in our gifting as churches. The harmonious partnership is meant to extend the reign of God on earth. They were zealous to spread the gospel. That was incredible to see. It was incredible to see the church shining around the world. But complete unity is a destination as well, church. This is the prayer of Jesus. Do you hear it? What are the commands of Jesus? There are three. Three commands of Jesus. He made it very simple for us. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul. Love your neighbor as yourself. This can sum up all of the Old Testament. And then the third, a new commandment I give to you. Love one another as I have loved you. He says later, you knew this from the beginning, but now you know it in full because we've had the revelation of Christ sacrificial love. There are so many one another verses. This good news is not built on our strength. Unity among believers results from the indivisible unity of God. I still believe in God's design. Amen? No competition. No lack. Working together is not about what you have or what you can give, but about who you are in Christ. Who you were designed to be. The unlocking that we witnessed 
These people who knew the Bible, they knew the gospel. They asked about life in the Spirit. And as we ministered, I saw them dance. I saw them get unlocked in the Holy Spirit. I saw 60-year-old bishops walk up, grab the microphone and say, I learned something today. And then he started to do this thing. And he, a... Now there was a root of freedom there. There was friendship. Friendship is the epitome of the kingdom. And there was friendship there. But as we ministered in the Spirit and it started to unlock, it was a joy. Do you remember in the book of Acts when they said the gospel's gone ahead of us? Right? And people here are getting saved and people here are getting saved, but they haven't had the laying on of hands and the filling of the Spirit. And then they went there and then they did and then they saw it happen. That's what I just saw, church. I still believe in God's design. He is still doing it today the same way there has been no end to the work of the Spirit, the need of the Spirit, the freedom, the unlocking of the Holy Spirit. Because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Amen? When we design things, we make it about control and elevation. When God designs things, He makes it about freedom and multiplication. Amen? God's primary resource in his governance is people. Be careful about creating an atmosphere where you are making less friends instead of more. This is missional, as I said. When will the world know this, Josh? This all sounds incredible. Unity, freedom. As Andy was praying this morning, how badly does the world need the light of Jesus? When will the world know? Well, it just so happens Jesus prays, then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Jesus' final turns his prayer to those who do not yet know him. That the mission of Christ is divine is demonstrated by the unity of his disciples. Divine strategy the radiant confidence of Christ, the gospel in practice, a father's love seen in a family, the reality of the supernatural as we move in the Holy Spirit together, as he leads us and shapes us. And once unified, believers are able to bear witness to the true identity of Jesus as the one sent by God. This is what it's talking about. The gospel is not in word, but in power. Amen? In power. This is the unity that transcends all the differences. This is the unity that will convince the world that the gospel is true, that it's good news. This heart-to-heart -heart relational unity is the evidence for a supernatural reality that would then require a supernatural explanation. And guess what? We have one. When people see our love for one another and can't figure out why, they will ask, where does that come from? And we have to be ready with an answer for the hope that lies within us. Are we ready to speak hope, church? Are we training ourselves in any language but the language of hope? We need to be ready to have an answer of hope. The church is the community of the king. This church, my home church. I am so in faith for this church. I am so excited to see how God will work through us. And I have been so honored to be sent out by you. And I take it as a responsibility to come back and share with you the hope, the hope of the good news of the kingdom of God. To the increase of his government, there will be no end. And it is increasing, church. If we can hear the heart of the king, 
if we can hear Jesus' prayer for us, it completely transforms our focus, our purpose. By loving one another, church, this, this, this may be a mind-blowing statement, but I'm just going off of Scripture here. We have the opportunity to answer the prayer of Jesus. Jesus' prayer for us is that we would be one as he and the Father are one. What a mission. Who here is equipped to love? That's the starting point. That's it. Participate in what God is doing. Ask yourself, where is the focus? What are you paying attention to? What are you listening to? What shapes your mood, your feeling during the day? Lift your eyes to heaven, just as Jesus did at the beginning of this prayer. Look up to heaven. Listen to what God is talking about. Look for what God is doing. And love. Jesus believed we are better together. I still believe in God's design. Can we stand? This, this is God's design. This is God's heart. This is his prayer for us. Let me pray. Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you that you are faithful, you are unchanging, you are good, you are full of hope. Lord, may we be one as you are one. May the world know that Jesus was sent for our salvation. May all those who are trapped in darkness see our love for one another and know that you love them. Lift our eyes today that as we go out, as your disciples, as your ambassadors, that we will represent you together. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you, church.